if you're watching this interview right now, um, I want to let you know that you are like extremely lucky to be listening to this conversation because this is the most futuristic of crypto networks on the planet. What up, vigilantes? Today, I have the pleasure to show you a little something that is happening in the crypto space that I think you might be interested in. The rave is all about scaling on chain. And for the first time, we have the first blockchain that is private by default, that's proof of work, and that scales on chain, and that's Darrow. And today, we have six of clubs with us. How are you, six? I'm doing great, Ralph. How are you doing? Doing great. So Six, tell me a little bit about what you're doing with Darrow. So I am the founder of Dream Tables, uh, which is primarily a crypto games platform. Um, but I've also spent a little bit of time developing some other things outside of the Dream Tables flag as well. Nice. So what is Dream Tables? Dream Tables originally started as a Baccarat table, and it has since grown into a Baccarat table, two different kinds of poker being five card draw and Holdero, which is essentially Texas Hold'em. Um, and the most recent additions to the Dream Tables lineup are predictions markets and sports bets. So what do you mean by predictions markets? I'm pretty familiar with uh, Bitcoin Hive Mine from Paul Storks that has never launched. I'm also familiar with Ethereum's uh, Augur, which is a copy of Bitcoin Hive Mine. So you were ma you managed to create a predictions market on Daryl. Tell us about it. So what I've created, I guess before I talk about the predictions market, I'll, I'll mention kind of the the ethos that that I'm working with with Dream Tables. So. Part of the design of all of the products is for people to be able to launch and be the owner operators of them themselves. So it's it's not really like a casino in any sense. It's more designed for peer-to-peer -peer interactions and to empower people through the games that they choose to play, whether it's things like poker or, or different table games or predictions is the, the latest thing that we've given out to to people to be able to set up and run so essentially what the predictions are is peer-to-peer -peer based predictions on realistically the owner can set it up for whatever they choose but in the app currently i have the api set up for bitcoin and tether market uh, darrow tether and monero tether so nice essentially people can take a look at the contracts and see what types of predictions are running. Um, they all have variable time frames, So you, you kind of have the ability to pick and choose the different predictions that you like, whether it's a more long-term prediction or if you want to make a, a short-term prediction on tomorrow's price kind of thing, that's, that's an option. That's awesome. So, Right now, everyone's probably wondering, what is Darrow? Can you please tell people what Darrow is? Absolutely. So Darrow is a private layer one smart contracts platform. So what that means is that anyone doing anything on the network can maintain complete privacy on their layer one and still be able to interact with all different types of smart contracts and the products and services that can be made with those. Awesome. And so, Daryl, does it scale on chain? It does, yes. Awesome. Yeah, everyone is kind of running away from any externality uh, that comes outside of a blockchain. Anything external to a blockchain, people are realizing that it cannot be trusted. Like, we can trust the blockchain, but people started trusting, for example, exchanges outside of a blockchain like FTX and look what, look at what happened. People trusted Mt. Gox and look at what happened. So finally people are realizing that to build on chain is very important. And now there is offering this very unique feature, which is as a protocol, you build on chain, but you're private by default, correct? That's correct, yes. So where is Darrow right now in its 
development? Well, Darrow has an interesting development history. Um, if you follow back through the history, you'd see that we are currently on Stargate chain, which launched on mainnet less than a year ago. It was February of this past year when it went live. So just to kind of put that into perspective with, with different projects, all the things that have came out, such as dream tables and DEXs and bridges and NFTs, NFAs, all, all the different things that we've managed to create on Darrow have all popped up in that short amount of time. So I, I think it's still very early on for what we're going to see in terms of products and services and the full capabilities that we can do with something like Darrow. Yeah, Darrow really comes across as something different and, and to a certain degree weird because I personally have never encountered a platform where I can build something that is completely censorship resistant, where I can create, you know, consumer goods and capital goods that uh, can't be can't be censored. So what what do you foresee in the future uh, of their entrepreneurship? That's a tough question, honestly. Every time I get asked that question, the only thing that rings through my mind is everything. I, I really believe that that anything and everything that people want could realistically be created on Darrow. Wow. So one of the biggest criticisms that I've had uh, regarding a protocol that is private by default that does smart contracts applications is the fact that if you were to say create a Twitter on chain on Darrow, you know that the criticism I hear is is that you're going to have to start sharing that public key, that view key, pardon me, that view key with everyone that you want to interact with. So do you, are there any impediments for blockchains that are private by default like Darrow if they are to create an application like a Twitter where they want to go viral? I would like to say no. I mean, I, I probably need to see the, the platform to be able to fully answer that question. But um, with with Darrow, you do have certain things like proofs and optional disclosure, so private by default. But if you you need to prove something, the the ability and optionality is there for all the users. So I really think that Darrow offers us a completely new paradigm. And the question that I just asked you, really, it was kind of unfair, but I, I, it's the first question that I'm asked, right? And it's the first question that I that I come up with, because we tend to just compare things to those things that we already know. It's really hard, hard for us human beings to conceptualize things out of thin air. We, we tend to understand things in relation to something else that we understood in the past, right? So mm -hmm. what's crazy about Darrow is, is that it gives us capabilities of doing things that we don't really have a reference point in the past. Does that make sense? Because it's, that, it's that a new totally world. That totally makes sense. Yeah. So, so when I talk about Darrow, um, it's hard to talk about these things. And I'm pretty sure um, you are familiar with these types of conversations more than I am as a Darrow entrepreneur. Could you give us some insight as to like the types of things you guys are talking about? Because again, I can only reference things I already know. But when you give me a, a spaceship like Darrow that opens up possibilities that we've never had in the past, I don't even know where, the com where to start that conversation. Does that make sense? That, that makes sense. Yeah, that's a familiar feeling. Um, I think the, the first thing that comes to mind when you ask that question is a lot of the conversations about stuff... Um, tend to originally start from maybe a moral basis, uh, if I can use that word to explain it. Because okay. a lot of these products and services, once they've launched, they are potentially unstoppable. So that, that's something that a lot of us have to consider when designing products and services. So to kind of give an example of that, when I was first starting to develop on Darrow, there was a project called Red Plaza that kind of inspired 
the the way that I wanted to structure the tables. And essentially what that project was, was a, it was a type of decentralized marketplace that hmm. anyone could launch a contract and sell whatever pro products or, or services that they were going to sell out of their store. And again, something like that being completely unstoppable once it's launched, there's obviously the moral questions that, that people have to ask themselves about building that and putting something like that out into the world. Right. So that's definitely an interesting topic that I've, I've seen come up in plenty of discussions around development on Darrow. And what I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure everything you guys are building um, is open source, on-chain, and interoperable, meaning that whatever you create can be picked up by another entrepreneur because it's open source and built on top of better or just use what you created as a Lego for them to build more later, or whatever they want. Is that correct? Am I getting this right? That's absolutely correct. Yeah, I, I can give you give you a couple good examples of that as dude, well. So hats off, man. You guys are you guys are in the runoff for the fucking future because. That is the future. And and everyone that's a market maker in crypto that is like, everyone that I respect in crypto that is ahead of the game, guys that are like really ahead of the game, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for on-chain, interoperable, open source. If you're not building on-chain interoperably and for, your, for everything that you do for it to be open source, you're... The future is not looking at you in, with favor. Let me just say that. Because if you build with the model of, I'm going to go get VC money. I'm going to build closed source. And I'm not going to have my technology be interoperable. I'm going to patent my stuff. Then you create a closed garden around you. And by creating a, 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 a closed garden around you, you are automatically driven to think think about your shareholders because you took vc money or money from investors and you forget about the network around you but the way you guys are building in darrow is very commendable and beautiful because you're open you're building an open garden that is open source interoperable on chain and that is private by default so you guys are, <laughs> you guys just added another layer to the mix because these are your competitors right now. Your competitors are Saito, Aptos, Solana, Ethereum, Radiance, Lens Protocol, Cardano, AOS, Tesos, Polygon, Polkadot. Holy shit, I ran out of fingers, right? Like <laughs> BSV is another one because they're building with that ethos as well, right? interoperable, on-chain, and open source. But now you guys, you guys are like that pink elephant in the room, that purple cow. You guys are added add in the, in the, into the mix private by default. So if you're watching this right now and, and, and you don't know about Darrow, man, welcome to the club. Because guess what? The vast majority of the space still doesn't know about Darrow. So tell me a little bit more about this ethos that you guys are building under. Um, so yeah, pretty much all of the things that the dream tables puts out. And I mean, it kind of goes with the open source ethos of the whole Darrow ecosystem as well, but um, is for, like you say, interoperability and for people to, to use as they please and uh, use it in different manners if they so choose. So to kind of give my, my latest example of interoperability, um, the new Dreams app that was just released yesterday features two things. I could name a few more, but I'll just pick the main two interoperable points that have ad been added into the app. So there is a service that has been built, um, I'll say beside Darrow, that's called Nomon. And essentially what that is, is a decentralized search engine. So that has been integrated into our latest app. And 
originally we had one of the NF one of the, the NFT standards, which is called the Art MS1 NFA. Those were in-game items. And in this latest release, we've been able to incorporate the other standards as well, which is the G45 NFT standard. So at this point, we essentially have all of the standards that have been created from different parties in the Darrow community uh, integrated into the application with uh, a decentralized search engine in there as so, well. So. so you guys have one token protocol for each and every one uh, of different types of digital assets that come up, can come about from Daryl. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So Dude, at this congratulations. Point, That's another victory point because look, a lot of uh, on-chain protocols that uh, want to scale, or a lot, they have like four or five different uh, token protocols. I know of one that has like eight. <laughs> so yeah, I know agreement. it's like sure you can scale on chain you can do all these beautiful things but you haven't even agreed on one freaking token protocol so yeah so keep going so you were saying the um at this point there's kind of two classifications i'll talk about for the the asset standards so we have the nfa standard and we have the g45 standard which if if you look at them broadly without getting in you might say oh it's just two tokens but really they they operate in different ways and they they kind of complement each other in different ways so it, it works out well that way while they can both represent things like nfts they both do different things that the other one can't in a sense so kind of gives people different options for how they want to create assets or what they'd like to do with their assets once they've been created. Okay, that's awesome, man. And so so what are you telling me? Are you telling me that we're gonna have decentralized exchanges on Dero? Yes, there is actually a DEX live on mainnet already. They nice. have a bridge to ETH and uh, liquidities in there. They they have DUSDT and, and a few other tokens. It's been been a little while since I, I've looked at what tokens are exactly on there, but uh, every time I take a peek at it, it's just growing more and more. Is there any conversation amongst devs and entrepreneurs to create a DEX that allows for private swaps between Monero, Wownero, Pirate Chain, and BTC? I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I'm, I'm sure somewhere somebody's having that conversation. So could you tell us a little bit more about your predictions market now that you explained everything that you did? Because that's kind of like where we left off. I want to know more about this predictions market. I know you created the Baccarat table. I know you created the poker, the two types of poker games. And this is all on chain, correct? Yeah, everything is on chain. Every single piece of anything that's came out of dream tables is, is on chain. Any of the, the cards that get dealt, um, yeah, and it's it's all it's all there. That's awesome. So, tell me a little bit more about the predictions market. First off, for those watching, could you please tell them what a predictions market is? Sure. So, a predictions market is essentially making predictions on future prices. Um, the the way that I set mine up, like I was saying, I I really push for my stuff to be able to be freed in the hands of others once they get it. I, I don't, I don't want to lock people into using it in a certain way by any sense. So the way I set the predictions contracts up, I tried to make them as simple as they could be for any binary based prediction. So I don't believe that these prediction contracts are going to be confined to just market based predictions. Essentially anything that has a, a yes or no or a, a binary response could be implemented into the contract. Awesome. The, the next election, for example, we can bet on that. It, exactly. We, we yeah. can do absolutely anything on there. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So sky's the limit. And so um, maybe, maybe you can share a little bit. Maybe you can show us your screen and maybe show us uh, what we're dealing with here so people can get an idea of, of what it is that Dream Tables is about and how this prediction market works? Sure. 
I'll get my screen going here. Just as I'm doing that, um, I will mention another part of my design efforts for all this was to try and keep the application as private as I could. So none of what Dream Tables does is, is browser based by any sense. So, I mean, putting ISP connection aside for a second, all you need to be able to interact with any of these products is the application, which again is all open source and connection to the Darrow network. Those are the, the only two requirements to be able to access any of this. Do you have to connect so, like your Ngram wallet to Dream Tables? Yeah, um, the cool thing with Darrow wallets is they have a built-in RPC server. So Darrow wallets can essentially communicate with different things. Um, my, my app is a, is a great example. People will see of how it can communicate with something, but could be browser-based things as well. Um, there's a, um, an extension for browsers that people can, can use to, to set up their wallet with for use on some of the NFT markets and stuff like that. Right on, right on. If you're watching this interview right now, um, I want to let you know that you are like extremely lucky to be listening to this conversation because this is the most futuristic of crypto networks on the planet. By far, this is extremely cutting edge. At the Crypto Vigilante, we think Darrow is going to be huge. And it's going to be a big deal. While you, while you get this going, Six, maybe you can give some words of wisdom to, maybe there's a 15-year-old, 20-year-old person out there that are like, man, this is awesome. You mean tell me this is like the gangster Ethereum, the real deal? How do I get in? People that are programmers, that are engineers, that want to get into this. What, what advice would you give them? How can they come in? The, the first place I would suggest any aspiring developer to go take a look at would be the Darrow Docs page. So you can find that at docs.darrow.io. Um, and the thing that I would like to point out for any aspiring developer is Darrow is still so new. So if you jump into it in the next little while, you're, you're essentially going to be jumping into a, a new ecosystem with lots of room for growth and development of the ecosystem and in turn the, the developer. So uh, to give an example of that, um, for me, when I first jumped into developing on Darrow, it was pretty much all foreign to me. It's, that's kind of the way it seemed. And it didn't take me too long to get brushed up on how Darrow operates. So to kind of further that, if, if you, as a developer, were looking into Ethereum and you wanted to make a coin or a, a asset contract, we'll say, um, these are kind of rough numbers, but to, make a coin on ETH, you'd probably need about 120 lines of code and we'll just say 15 to 20 functions, something like that. Whereas on Darrow, you can make that happen with 38 lines of code. So essentially a quarter of the code and seven to 10 functions, depending on what extra things you might want your, your asset to do. So even that's about half the work or half of what it would be required to do the same thing on Ethereum. Awesome. Thank you for saying that. And so, um, yeah, could you show us a little bit about your application? Yeah, I think you should have it there. I so yes. yeah, what we are looking at right now is the latest addition to the Dream Tables lineup. So this is called Dreams or the Dreams app. Um, so this is what you would see when you first started up here. You have a, a little wallet section. Um, we have our menu tabs down here. This is our in-app Dreams exchange. So we use Dreams for 
a few of the games. It's mainly for low level type of betting stuff, uh, just to make the decimal points easier on, on people's eyes and for tournament applications, they come in handy as well. Um, but really there's no point to holding them. I, I think I'm just going to throw that out there. They're a fixed rate token. So as you can see here, one Darrow equals 333 dreams and that's permanently fixed. That will not ever change. So to get in here, um, just kind of show you the, the few apps here real quick. This is what our poker table looks like. This nice. is what the Baccarat table looks like. This is what you would see when you're looking for predictions. So once you click on the tab here, um, Nomen in the background is going to run through its searches and populate all of the predictions that are going on for you. And nice. these predictions are are verified through the open source code itself. So hmm. this isn't something where somebody, if they modify the code, they, they can obviously still use it, but if, if they, they modify it in certain ways, it's not gonna populate on the list for other people to use. So it kind of keeps some sense of safety in there for the users that it's not just a bunch of random contracts that they don't know who designed it or or what the internals of it are. So if you find one you like, let's say you want to put in a Darrow USDT prediction. So this was from the round yesterday. We haven't started the one from today yet. So essentially yesterday's mark was 16,140. And at the end of the prediction, it was higher than that at 16,468. So anyone that was in this prediction with a higher prediction got the payout yesterday. Hmm, and nice. essentially the pot comes from anyone that's taking part of this. So what so, were you guys predicting here? Uh, higher or lower on Bitcoin price. Oh, and okay, the time, okay. frame, time frame on this one was 12 hours. So it was just kind of a, a short one that we started because uh, again we just launched this yesterday to the public. So dude, that is so cool, man! Bravo, bravo! So you know, like I said, uh, the the history behind this is Bitcoin Hive Mind, all Storks, aka Truth Coin. He never launched on Bitcoin, and he still wants to someday. Augur on Ethereum, copy paste everything he did on Bitcoin. And they tried it on Ethereum. Yeah, it's Ethereum. You know, what can I say? Um, yeah. This is awesome, bro. Wow. I'm literally like, I feel like I'm watching history before my eyes. Thank you for sharing this, man. And you just launched yesterday? Yeah, this, this app Fire. just came out yesterday. It's nice, barely 24 man. hours old at this point. Wow. Hey, man. Happy birthday, Daryl. Wow. Big day. Wow, this is awesome. Um, so yeah, one, one more thing to point out with the predictions contract. So one thing that I, I, I wanted to show is there's a couple different features between predictions and the sports, but realistically, they're, they're the same contracts. So I wanted to showcase a couple different features in between predictions and sports. Nice. And as this grows, the, the community can decide different things and determine which features that they would prefer. And not only that, but let's say, so just quickly, the, the leaderboard, or sorry, the predictions have a leaderboard aspect to them. So when you make a prediction, you enter your pseudonym or whatever you want to have on the leaderboard and any correct prediction, you get a point on the board. So it could be used for kind of community types of things. Um, but again, any of this can be changed. So let's say somebody wants a prediction market that doesn't have a leaderboard. We can make that alteration. The, co the code will be open source again, and they could update to the version that they wanted while still being verifiable in the application that yes, this is a dream tables contract and it, it is following the correct rules of the predictions. Nice. This is so, so cool. To show you 
sports. We got yeah. some games going on today, but yeah, no, no predictions yeah, so, going at this time. So here, let, let me ask you something because you know we're talking about this is the open source ethos, right? You created these amazing open source tools on Daryl on chain, and they're interoperable with other apps. What this leads me to realize is that let's say someone wants to grab the niche of sports and, and, you know, they're just someone, a badass group of developers are watching. There's like, man, you know what? He's got it already built out. Let's create an interface that focuses just on sports on chain and Daryl grab everything. They would have to log. They could even use, Dream tables to log into their website on Dero, but it's specifically for sports. Does that make sense? And then someone can do the same thing and top 100 music for the next month, right? So you're, you're absolutely correct. I, I can even you can't one do up it all. There. Yeah, you, you can't do it all, right? I mean, you're kind of showing everybody what's possible. But the beauty of this open source development is, is that anybody can come and build on top of what you did and make it even better blow it up which in a sense if someone really blows up based upon the work you did that's them paying you your severance package like here you go man boom we just pumped the heck out of your daryl bags you see what i'm saying absolutely um Dude, i guess cool. too if anybody is wanting to improve upon this I'll, I'll give you some some good insight to this so originally sports and predictions was its own application. So in the beginning of Dream Tables, everything was its own individual application. Baccarat was an app, Five Card was one app, Holdero was one app. So this is the, the first thing we have that kind of combines all of these services. But Predictions and Sports started as an individual app as well. So that's publicly available for people to check out. And to further that, so all of the sports and all of the predictions, it's all done through API. There, there's no, you don't have to decide anything. Um, but what I'd like to do with it is the original single application for predictions in sports. It's just a, a tiny little app compared to this thing, like window size and code size are both significantly smaller. So that is going to get turned into a fully automated service for this so that if you want to run let's say 10 different sports contracts, you could set up that very minor application and run it all through there and use the main Dreams app as more just an interface or if you want to use it for the other games. But definitely I'd like to have something that can kind of facilitate an extremely large quantity of these for individuals that like to, to run them. And then to boot to, um, I've made all the contracts with multi-sig applications. So if there's a group or a, some entities that want to get together and put some large amount of funds into one of these contracts, they could do that while maintaining a multi-sig aspect to it. Dude, fascinating, man. Hats off. This is awesome, Six. So cool. So yeah. Uh, that's this is this is what's beautiful guys is is that it's almost like when you build like this um what we understand as like the business or the corporation completely changes because now the corporation and the business is darrow darrow is the business that we all work for in the darrow network so in a sense if i'm a darrow entrepreneur and i have a I start something on Darrow. Eventually, I know that my business or my endeavor on Darrow is not going to outlast the Darrow network. So what I want is obviously to create something that is op open source, interoperable, on chain, so that people can build upon it. Because at the end of the day, it's almost like, fuck my business. What really matters is the network. So it changes the game. It, it, it changed this this creation of of the blockchain when you actually build on chain changes the game and and the incentive structures of how we do business. So um okay, so anything else uh you want to show us regarding your applications? Um yeah, maybe we'll just run through sports here real quick. So this this is what it looked like when you see a game set up. So 
Um, right now we have three different contracts for three different leagues, FIFA, NBA, and NFL bets we're running right now. So yeah, you just click on a contract. You would see any games that are going on right now. You could choose a game and pick your team and pick your wager amount. And then, yeah, you'd see the, the pot go up. And since this is this end predictions, both are peer to peer. Essentially, the odds are the true odds of this single individual bet. So I'm really curious to see if, let's say in predictions, for example, there's a bunch of people that think it's going higher and they all put in a higher prediction. It is possible that somebody could come in and put one single lower prediction. And if he is the one that got it right, then the whole pot goes to him. So there's the possibility that you could win some pretty good favorable odds in certain circumstances if you, you happen to luck out. Because this is fascinating. Wow. And then, yeah, maybe I'll just point awesome. out too here. We, we have um, live scores here. So I'm just pulling it up. But for any of the leagues, you, you have uh, – th and this is, this is all live too. So, you, I mean, these games are done. But anyone that was in action, you can literally watch the, the shot clock or, or the time clock count down. Um, it auto populates all the schedules. So for anyone setting bets up, they, they basically have the schedule laid out in front of them for setting any, anything up they want. And then, yeah, like I'd mentioned, it's the payouts are all done through, through API. So it gets the, the result of who won, what the score was. And, and that's how the payout is done. Cool. Awesome. Um, do you mind, since this is pretty new to everyone watching, could you show everyone your uh, poker and your Baccarat as well while, while we're at it? Yep. Uh, there's another thing, too, we're going to look at before we get rid of this application. So um, it's kind of tough. Can I here? We'll see if I can buy some dreams real quick. Can okay, play some Baccarat. So while we're waiting for the dreams to show up here, this is what the poker table looks like. I can't really do much without another player here, but right. just to kind of show you the poker interface, we have tables listings and the way that I've designed the contracts, there's two classifications for, for all of the tables and this, sorry, two classifications for all of the contracts. So this includes predictions and sports what i'm about to talk about excuse me um so they come in what i'm calling either a public version or a private version so what that means is that when you launch a contract you have the option to choose one or the other and public is one that will show up on the index for everyone to see so you can see all these tables here are what would be considered public tables so if you want to play on one, you would just click on the table. You can get some statistics here when the last move was, what version the table is. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Um, the name of the table. So that's another cool thing that we can do with Darrow Smart Contracts is set headers. Nice. So you can actually name um, a contract or a table. Sorry. Um, and then, yeah, there's the private versions of the contracts that you can launch as well. So those ones will not be indexed. So there's a bunch of private tables out there and you, you can't find them on this list. So if you happen to have a private table address, you would just implement it up in here. And then same idea, come back to the whole Darrow table and you'd be playing at the table or you'd be viewing the table. Um, one of the next developments that is going to start getting put into place with Holdero is the ability to play multiple tables at the same time. So it's pretty much there. Um, but uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be high up on the list for the next update. So you'll be able to bounce back and forth between two different tables or more if you wanted and play different hands. Because although Darrow's block time is significantly quicker than a lot of blockchains it it is 
in terms of high speed poker, it, it might be on the slow end for, for really serious players. So being able to play multiple tables or play Baccarat sports and predictions all at the same time, I think will definitely give a little bit more entertainment value to, to the user. Nice. Um, I think that was about it. I guess to, we have avatars from the NFA and G45 collections. So when you sit down at a table, you get your pseudonym displayed. And if you own one of those assets, you can use it as an avatar. Cool. Um, let's see. Yeah, it looks like we got some dreams here. So we can play a hand of Baccarat. And again, we're we're dealing with blockchain, so there's there's block time here. So we can go to the log and see that our Baccarat player TX has been submitted. So essentially now we're just waiting for the block to go through and we'll see some cards pop up. While we're waiting for that, because we should get a notification. Yeah, there's our notification. So yeah, here's here's our hand. Banker wins three over zero. So unfortunately I, I didn't win that bet, but um, I mean, you can always do another one. And while we're waiting for that one to come in, we'll take a quick peek at the marketplace that's also integrated into this app. So nice. our marketplace is at this point specifically for the NFA assets. And anything you see here is actually the up for auction at this time. So um, any of these are in-game items that you can use as themes, avatars, and custom decks of cards. So this one, for example, is a theme. So you could bid on this theme right now if you wanted to. Um, you could, again, get custom card backs, card faces. Um, yeah, it's going to be pretty fun to see all the different uh, artists and, and creators that, that will enjoy putting their, their things into an application like this. So it looks like our other Bakker uh, bet finished and I didn't win that one either. So maybe better luck tomorrow, but, but yeah, um, there's also for sale category. So you can just put something up for a, a straight price if you wanted. And again, it's all in-game assets. So anything you see in here can be used in the game. You have an entire assets section here. So anything you own would populate in here. You can choose your cards from here. So you get two stock decks right off the bat, a light and a dark. And they can be interchangeable by just the back or just the face. So you can have light back, dark face, dark back, light face, whatever combination you choose different themes if you have one and then yeah you have your avatar and if i own a deck of cards i have the ability to share it with the other people at the table so if i had a fancy deck of cards i could click the share decks button here and anyone else playing at my table would be able to see those cards with me and i guess just to finish off this page here we have our set headers section here so the, the names that we were talking about in the, the contract addresses here, so how, how you would set the name and the description would basically just be name, description, and you put your icon, whatever you want to display as the picture for that contract. And the last feature on this page is the Nomen Index. So if you see here, we have 5,653 contracts indexed into this SC. Sorry, indexed into our DB. And essentially, this is just filtered to anything that pertains to dream tables in the games. But the cool part about this is you can add your own custom contracts to the index. So you're not defined by what we've set up as an index as dream tables. If you have a bunch of buddies that want to set up your own private betting contracts, you can do that add the smart contracts to the index and then they will show up on your application. Nice. Looks very good. Thank, thank, you, thank you. you for showing us all this. I really appreciate it. 
No worries, my pleasure. I think, yeah, and, it's pretty yeah. much it here for the first version. I think we've been through nice. the majority of the features. And what's the website for people to uh, come and, and play? If people want to check us out, they can find us at dreamtables.net or they can search up Six of Clubs on GitHub is where all of our code repositories are hosted. Uh, the download links are also on the website if, if they'd just like to get the application. Nice, nice. So I want to ask you um, a couple last questions about, you know, Daryl infrastructure. And it regards the scalability of Darrow. Darrow is, is a project that obviously, I've as already said, it's extremely amazing. And so I wouldn't be surprised if this thing scales, um, not scales, but if, if this thing just attracts a lot of attention all of a sudden. And if that were the case, uh, maybe if you could please break down Darrow mining for people and how that works and how Darrow is uh, ready for that influx of people. Absolutely. So Darrow mining has a pretty, pretty interesting feature to it. Um, they call it Sigma mining. So one Darrow block is essentially split up into nine mini blocks. So instead of trying to mine the one big block, when you're mining Darrow, you mine mini blocks. So it gives people especially with lower hardware, it gives them the ability to actually participate in the network and, and get rewards for the effort that they're doing instead of having to, to wait weeks and months to try and find a block. Nice. So are you saying that everybody can jump in and help contribute to zero mining with their laptop, correct? Absolutely, yeah. If, if you... If you have a machine that's capable of mining and, and you, you hook it up, um, you, you're going to get some rewards. It kind of kind of all goes around to determine on the hash rate. So if you get in when the hash rate's a little lower, you're definitely going to get a few more. But um, even for people with lower end hardware, there's, there's some Darrow pools that have started to pop up that they're able to participate in. So it really kind of eliminates barriers of entry for, for people that might be worried about not getting blocks. That's awesome. So where can people go learn more about, you know, contributing to the network as, as a miner? Um, if they want to learn, I, that Darrow Docs page is, is definitely the place to go. I don't know how much more I can stress that. I, I think pretty much everything that I needed to learn to accomplish all of this came pretty much from that website. And then maybe obviously some questions after reading, but that, that That's place Darryl is indispensable. Docs, how do you, how do you Daryl docs.io. Dot io. Dot right? io. Yeah. Okay, great. Daryl docs.io right on. So six, I feel like we're going to have more conversations with you in the near future. <laughs> because you just keep building these awesome things and and uh yeah i want everybody to try this out you know download your ngram wallet for darrow get some darrow and 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 play around with this because again this is playing in the future this is like ahead of the game in comparison to all other networks again it's interoperable private by default proof of work scalable on-chain, open source. What else do you want? Any last parting words of wisdom, Six? L look into Darrow is re really all I can, I think is my last parting words. Like ever, ever since I first did the deep dive into it, I've been absolutely hooked ever since. And for me, nothing is, is looked the same after. I, I, I look, at, look at certain things that, that I used to revere and it's just like, wow, it's just a completely different world over here now. So what world do you come from? Before Daryl, what were you up to in crypto? Or were you even in crypto? I was in crypto, but not so much as a developer. That's that's kind of what I was hoping to impress upon anyone that wants to build or get into this type of stuff. With the how easy it is to, to get into Daryl, like in terms of, of learning and, and just 
the code base and and what you need to actually accomplish any of this stuff versus trying to do it on ethereum or any of the other smart contract platforms it, it uh that to me i think is is really going to be a huge benefit for the darrow ecosystem um like i i've when i looked into trying to do any of this stuff on previous blockchains it just it never clicked. I don't know what else I can say. Like, obviously, the, the protocols didn't really support the, the private ethos that, that I had in my mind for these types of products. But even just beyond that, actually accomplish this type of stuff is, at least in my mind, it, it seemed significantly more difficult than doing anything on Darrow. That's awesome. Hey, Six, thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you for sharing and thank you for building everything that you're building. Um, we all really appreciate it. No worries. My pleasure. I think too, uh, maybe I'll just give one more shout out kind of in relation to our last topic there about developers. Um, on the Six of Clubs GitHub, there is a few tools that developers can use for multi-sig contracts. So I've designed kind of base level multi-sig contracts for token issuance um, and a application called DSlate that it's basically a springboard for developing uh, desktop and realistically could be mobile applications too with the framework. So, I mean, if anyone wants to play around with Darrow, those would be some pretty great starting points that people could uh, check out and start getting their hands dirty. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Six, and thank you guys for tuning in. And yeah, let's get this party going. Peace, love, anarchy. Take care.